Hello, this is Daniel Lin, and this is my lab report on Physics 2211 Lab 4 on oscillations. Uh, quickly, I'm just going to go over the table of contents, and, which is what we're going to be going over today in this lab report. We're going to have an introduction where I go over some relevant ideas, uh, relevant information key ideas, an analysis of the masses motion, computational model results, and what does it mean at the end. So just some quick uh, key ideas uh, that are important to the lab. We have Newton's law of motion and momentum principle, force due to gravity and spring force, energy principle, kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and spring potential energy. And then here are some relevant formulas to the lab. We have the velocity and position update formulas, forces due to gravity, spring force, kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, spring potential energy, and application of energy principle. And then here's just some diagrams. Uh, the force of gravity is always pointed downwards, while the spring force is always pointed parallel to orientation of the spring, and that can point in either direction depending on whether the spring is stretched or compressed. This is just the video that's provided to us, um, and this is what I use to track with Tracker. And this is just a uh, excerpt from my code. Uh, I found I plugged in the mass of the ball along with the position of the ball, and yeah. And then I also found the spring constant and the relaxed length of the spring, and I plugged those all in. Uh, this is another excerpt you know, where I calculated the force of gravity in the spring, uh, calculated F net by adding those two up, used uh, velocity and position update formula to keep track of the mass, and at the end I calculated the change in each form of energy. This here is a video of the program running after taking all the data from Tracker and uh, and putting it in. So let's take a closer look at the uh, first graph, which is the change in energy versus time. Uh, both the red and green, uh, which are the change of energy of uh, force of gravity and force of spring are oscillating between zero and they are always on opposite sides. The blue line is the change in kinetic energy and that too is also oscillating. What's really interesting is the orange line which is the change in total energy and that is always zero. And here let's, uh, is a closer look at the other two graphs. And as you can see the red and blue line are often very close but are generally slightly different and this comes from either calculation errors or rounding errors and also from the low quality of videos and then i'll further discuss um the why the discrepancy in the last few slides so what does it mean uh so the work done is uh equal to the change work done is equal to the change in total energy and then as you can see in the graph the orange line which is the change in energy is at zero therefore the energy principle is satisfied uh, earlier there was a discrepancy in the observed versus prediction predictive data for expo for exposition this could be solved by calculating the time period for oscillation in the x duration and then using that value to calculate the spring constant and using the computational model I've calculated the two oscillation time periods, and as evidence, they differ rather significantly. Uh, this has a quite a major effect on the results as we use the time period to calculate the spring constant, which is used alongside other variables to predict the mass's motion. Uh, what we could do is find an average period of oscillation and use that value in the computational model, or we could use uh, different time periods of oscillation in the x and y direction, and hence have different spring constants for motion in different directions. Uh, thanks so much for listening to my lab report.